G'day legends, welcome back to Beers and Break Evens, the late show for round 22, answering all of your questions that have been sent in this week. Timbo, how are you? Probably as good as the last hour when I asked you. Yeah, even better I reckon. I felt like it was a very <laughs> top-notch episode of Beers and Break Evens. It was today, a good so one, wasn't good. it? I'm up and about. Sometimes you, when you feel one come off the middle, you go, mm. no, Ron, we're good here. <laughs> <laughs> let it run, let the legs go. How are you, Kat? Very good, thank you. It's been a nice morning, just just churning out our content and we've got some great questions coming up. So I'm looking forward to your answers actually. And the late show is normal time for them, but it's really late for us today. Yeah, it's really late for it's, us. Yeah, it's uh, no flying zone here. Uh, let's do a rock off, mate. I am going for three in a row, right. unprecedented times here. You All ready? Right. Ready. Scissor, paper, paper, rock. You beauty. Order has been restored. Thank you. Am I taking the new ball? Take it, mate. Show us what you got. Catman do. what do we got? All right, let's kick it off with a question from The Don. He says, Karaz v-, v. Holmes for the run home. Pick one. When we say Don, are we talking Donny or different Don? It's the Don. This has come from Timmy, so. This is from The Don. The Don, not yeah. Donny Sports. Possibly, no, not Donny Sports. Potentially the ghost of the Don Brandman. Oh, good, because I fucking hate that Donny guy. Yeah. Asshole. Dog. What was the question? <laughs> Kiraz or? I'm glad that you just stopped listening when you <laughs> no, heard the Don. Kiraz versus Holmes for the run home pick one. Oh, I prefer Val Holmes just for his upside and with goal kicking. Uh, he does have a buy over the next few weeks, though, so that also mm. does hinder. I've always been a big Val Holmes guy, though. So even this year when he has been a little bit hit and miss at times, he's still scoring well. I feel, And I know that Kiraz did really well on the weekend, but I feel like Val Holmes is more likely to go 100-plus on any given week. So I'm Team Val. What do you think of Timbo? I'm Team Kiraz. Mm. I think uh, you mentioned the buy there. That's a big factor in it, the extra game for Kiraz. I think... Val is more likely to go 150 as a goal kicker in a very good attacking outfit. I think Kiraz is more likely to go 100 on any given week. His base, his power is unbelievable. The dogs are humming. Their draws a lot softer than the Cowboys on the run home. I just think what Kiraz is doing between centre and wing, doesn't matter where he plays, has been outstanding. I don't know if I'll own him this season and I regret it a lot. I think he's tremendous. Kiraz has about four more 100-point scores than I thought he would this season as I look at his stats, so pretty impressive. Yep. I'm still Team Val, though. Okay, this question is from Joshua. Is an Anai a, pod, a worthy pod over Crichton for any other pod to RFs? Ooh. I don't mind it. Look, we know that he his base is notoriously not great, but it's been a bit better this season. Like Looking neat now, uh, base the last three weeks of 47, wow. 46, and 58. Like That's improved out of sight. And... Just with ball in hand, he looks tremendous. I have, you know, I've spoken about it all year. I have concerns over his defense. Missing tackles, it doesn't matter that much in Supercoach. It's what he's doing in attack, and he's looked great. So, yeah, with the upside there, I wouldn't do it, but there's a genuine pod play in Nanai. There is a huge pod play there. I just don't love those last three weeks by Melbourne Bulldogs. Mm. That's the only thing that scares but me off. But we think that... Melbourne are going to rest for that game. That's true. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, I, If you would have told me four minutes ago, Tim, to guess his base this season, I would have missed it by 20. Yeah. That's impressive. Not bad, is it? Very impressive, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind it. Cool. All right, this question is from Arne. My question is what do I do with Isako? Ooh, uh, probably one more so for Timmy because he's obviously got him and has had him for a while. I haven't paid too much attention, but it does. My eyeball test feels like he's not getting much ball in saying that. He hasn't been getting much ball. He hasn't scored a try in a few weeks and last few weeks, 76, 54, 69, 60, 43. It's not horrendous, uh, but I think you want bigger and badder over the run home. Yeah, look, I'm looking at cutting ties with Jermaine Asako this week. With their run home, Roosters, Warriors, Dogs, Storm, Broncos, Knights, that night runs away. It's a tough draw. I spoke about on beers and breakers, but the left edge of the Dolphins with Isaiah Katoa is getting all the quality ball. If you're low on trades, hold Asako. He's not going to let you down. I just mm. think that ceiling is so restricted at the moment because the, the lack of quality ball he's getting. Uh, I think anyone with trades up the sleeve can look to go a little bit of a pod anti pod play. He's about forty percent ownership uh, and look to sell him. Cool. Nice. All right, from Jacob to Luna Brian. I need Karaz for head to head finals. Who do I sell? Kelly, Ira, Holmes, or Garrick? You mate. It's me, is it? Yeah. Ah, oh, good. Or is it me? No, it's no I think it's you. Oh, sorry. 
Kelly, Iro, Holmes, or Garrick? I would probably sell KL Iro. I don't necessarily think that Iro is a sell. I think you can more than comfortably hold on to him for the rest of the season. He's rock solid. Scored a few tries in recent weeks for scores of 84 and 78. However, uh, if you are looking to move on one of those players, it sounds like you are, I think uh, Iro's certainly the one for me. Probably narrowly ahead of Brian Kelly. The other thing is with Iro is huge ownership. So you can go the antipod play there as well. Yep, completely agree with Timmy. It would be my play. I love the anti-pod uh, side of it. Uh, I kind of like Brian Kelly as a pod, and I think the mm. other two are out-and-out out keepers. So, uh, Ido, I've already sold him. You never owned him. We're both going without him, and I'm, I'm not super concerned about it, mm. especially now with Molotalo out as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to move off Ido. Cool. All right. This one is from Matthew K. He said, rank these cheapies. Casey, Ali, Stone Street. Oh, okay. I would have Casey as my number one to get. Um, and then what's uh, Leo Tower at? What's his price, Timbo? He's about 313, I believe. Yeah, I, I think I would rather have him over Stone Street personally. What do you reckon? <sighs> the Warriors have a buy in round 27. You're paying an extra 113 odd K for about 109K to go to Leotawa from Stone Street. So, look, I'd have him clean at number one for sure. He's still very cheap at 270K in a gun side with a soft draw, no buys. McLean is number one. I'd actually put Sammy Stone Street. Granted, Mully Taylor's probably back for the last two games, but I think to save that extra cash and the buy in round 27 for the Warriors, I'd probably go Stone Street number two. What's well, Stone Street's break even and stuff? Where, where's he? Well, he's only he played one game. Played the one game. What did he score? 41. He had a try in that. Mm. What well, is going to be there for four weeks? So what you'll get mm. two price rises out of him. It's not about the price rise. Whoever you're buying out of those two, you're holding for the you're season. You're holding for the season. So yeah, I think it's irrelevant. So I'm just looking at the extra over 100k you can store up. You probably don't really want to play either of them anyway. So no, that's a good argument. Fair enough. Yeah. Cool. All right. The next question. I like this question. It's a good question from Cool Corey. Early to tell even for now, but who do you see as a 2025 best pickup to start the season? <sighs> tough live, Timber. Very yeah, tough. Yeah, good question. Uh, there's going to maybe be opportunity at 5'8". I'm just thinking at Penrith and the players leaving there. Like if Dane Laurie was to jade the 5'8", it's what he'd be on, but you know, every chance it is Jack Cole, so probably not. Mate, you look at blokes returning from injury. Mm. Campbell Graham. Oh, yeah. Mm, hasn't played a game this year. I'm not certain of what his exact discount will be, but especially draw pending to start next season. He comes in, it's a peck injury. He's not coming. I hate when it's coming back from like ACLs or bad hamstring tears or calves, that sort of stuff. Peck, I think he'll come back fired up, ready to go. He'll be fit as. He's one of the best trains in the game. So, yeah, I think at a, if we can get him at sort of sub 600K for the bunnies, Wayne Bennett at the helm, he could be a sneaky one. Yeah, I like that. Uh, for me, the first guy I thought of was Zach Hosking down the Canberra Raiders. I think he takes Elliot Whitehead's edge there. Hopefully he stays on the bench for the next few weeks and just drops a bit of cash. You won't get him dirt cheap, but you might get him 450 or so. And if I can get a Hosking at 450, I'll take that every day of the week. The other one I think is worth watching, the Roosters losing a lot of outside backs at the end of this season. Sue Lee, Manu leaving. I'm, I reckon they'll go out to the market and sign someone. They've also got a young guy there, Robert Toyer, who's actually returning from injury on the extended bench this week. Big, big raps on him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a cheapie mm. for round one. Yeah, right. At lucky last one. Penny, what Penny would do with their pack. Jane Fisher Harris leaving. Mm. I suspect Isaiah Papali'i probably plays in that front row rotation. But if they decide to put Scotty Sorensen back to the middle rotation that he did prior to the edge move, and IPAP is an 80 minute edge player for Penrith, lock and load. Yeah, very interesting watch there. Mm. Okay, this is my question to you guys. I'm throwing a little spanner in here. In the mm. spirit of the Olympics, if you had to enter with any sport, what would it be? And it can't be a rugby league related sport. So no rugby sevens. Oh, no. Yeah, because I would have done so well in rugby sevens. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you've got to put a line through it. <laughs> I don't know if we come home with a gold now with me ruled out. That's tough. <laughs> what are you thinking? Oh, throwing to me. Thanks, yeah, right. I have no we idea. Are, a little shout out to St. Greg's. Year 12, 2012, St. Greg's 2012. We were the, the state champions in Rugby Sevens. We are. Yeah. Yep. yeah right. so, but this is why I said not Rugby Sevens. Yeah. Well, good. I just had to give myself a moment in the sun. <laughs> um, 
Oh, not a terrifically quick. You know what? As a swimmer going through the grades at school, back at St. Patrick's Parish School, Cooma back in the day, mm. very ordinary swimmer at all strokes, I could breaststroke. For some weird I reason, I could do breaststroke. And I used to get days off school for carnivals and making a few different carnivals, just going away for like the 50 metre, 100 metre breaststroke. Terrible at the rest of them. Do you find yourself defaulting to a bit of a breaststroke when you're in the pool? Oh, all the time. It's all I can do. And it's like I used to do backstroke and just go lane rope to lane rope. I'd come, <laughs> out, with, I'd come out with blood on my hands. I, I used Can to I drown. say yeah. I used to do I, in swimming competing in Doggy primary paddle. school, no, I used to do backstroke and then pull myself oh, on, the, on the lane. The greatest move ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in, in butterfly I used to dive under and I'd just swim as far as good underwater because it was way easier than having to actually do butterfly. <laughs> Um, but I could do He's breaststroke for some reason. Mm. I like that. What do you got? Uh, I think I would probably have to go for maybe like a shot put or something. doesn't <laughs> help that I'm weak as piss, but <laughs> shot put, probably my best hope, I think. Um, I saw a post yesterday from a mate in one of our group chats. It was like, which sport could you least embarrass yourself mm. in? We had a pretty in-depth conversation. I was sort of – I feel like I watched those skateboarders. They seem to be falling over all the time. I know I'd fall over heaps. Maybe. I don't know. Well, breakdancing is a new one. Would you give that a go? I saw the great Lou having a crack at breakdancing on uh, the, the We Mean Well podcast the other day. I thought that was hilarious, oh, but good. no. Uh, me and I don't want to talk for you, Timmy, but I know that I haven't been here with the rhythm stick. I have absolutely not. Yeah, I think it was a big swing and a miss on the uh, biz and break <laughs> yeah, evens. I panel. also won't be representing Australia at Eurovision anytime soon. So we'll throw that one in as well. What would you do? And you can't say soccer, football, whatever the hell you want to call it. Well, that's the one where I probably would least likely embarrass myself. But um, I do have a, a relative that uh, a few generations ago that uh, won gold, I believe, in discus or something like that. I had no idea where that was going. No, yeah. no idea. No, whatsoever. honestly, neither did I because yeah. I almost forgot what I was saying. I think back back in high school days, the only thing I ever did representative level was long distance running. Mm-hmm. So I did the the one point five k run. Yeah. I reckon I'd give that there you a go. shot. Bit of Ned Brockman about her. Bit of Ned. Well, not that much. Not that much, yeah. but no not one's four, got that not much. Not 4,000 <laughs> I don't think kilometers. it's safe to have that much Ned no. in you. I'd um, bringing the the Winter Olympics into it actually. Grew up on the slopes. I'd be a downhill skier. Of course you would, but. Yeah. I Wouldn't, knew, I had a feeling this question would um be a bit to unpack. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to take in here. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, to, lot take to take in. in. Yeah. Which one am I? The, which one am I the least shit at? Yeah. Shout out to Vlandis. I'm hoping he gets uh, rugby league nines in for the uh, Brisbane Olympics. I'd love <laughs> to see imagine. that. Could you imagine? Yeah. That'd be unreal to see. It'd be great. All right. All right. Um, well, we have one more question. Yeah, Ooh. take us away. And this is from James D. He said, "Sit or start, Greg Marju." Oh, I feel very passionate on this one. I think the Panthers' right edge is the spot to target. I think Phoenix gets a lot more ball to KP. I think KP is going to have Dylan Lucas outside him. That's going to mean cutout ball every day of the week. I'm playing Greg this week, and I feel pretty confident playing him. What do you reckon? Mm, I think if you have depth, I think it's a great opportunity to sit him. His ownership's growing pretty rapidly. and Coward. You mentioned all those things, and, and I agree that – so what, the right edge defensive Panthers have been bad. They've also got Nathan Cleary back on that right edge, who is just integral to it. So him coming back instead of a Brad Schneider or a Jack Cole or whoever it's been changes the edge completely. They've still been cut up with him there, though. Well, the, the Dolphins absolutely teared him to pieces. That was without – their entire without their entire origin contingent though that changes that team mm. entirely. So now, like on the weekend, what the Dragons? I don't think, don't know if they scored a try down there. They scored what one try or something? Yeah, that that they, they, they that was down the right points, edge to be yeah. fair. But it was via Zach uh, Lomax offload. I think if you can sit him, you should. But easier said than done. Mainly on the buy, a lot of Olakwatu holders, a lot of Garrick holders. Easier said than done. Greg Marshu scores. Drum roll. Thank you. Seventy five. You heard it here first. 43. 75. Thanks for coming. Cap, Greg Marcy scores. 52. <laughs> I like that. Nice. Very good. Safe in the middle. Guys, that's all the questions. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for joining us once again, guys, on the late show. Uh, we will see you next week on Beers and Break Even. Stay tuned. Cutest sneeze of all time once again from Kat. Uh, make sure you keep an eye on SC Playbook, the Roo Crew, for any updated trades or anything this weekend. But Yeah, all that. We uh, SC Playbook 
still not back up on Instagram. Mm. It has been a nightmare. Uh, mate, we're putting our content in the meantime on SC Public Cricket. So it's still out there. Go and give SC Public Cricket a follow on Instagram. It'll all be there, hopefully resolved in the next couple of days. And Zuckerberg, if you're watching, sort your shit out, bruh. Bloody oath. What you got a bit of Zuck in you, actually. <laughs> Look. Oh yeah. God. Dead ringer. What else was he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like you're not successful like him. What are you talking about? Pioneering. Please. Fucking please. All right, me, Kat, and Zach will see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for joining us once again. Cheers.